Hello, Walking Dead fans. I'm going to tell you what happened on The Book of Carol. Daryl Dixon, Season 2, Episode 3. My mom watched it. Great episode from start to finish. Action-packed. A lot of storyline developments. Um, some end it. Some new Easter eggs were shown. And a cliffhanger um, into the episode. The episode started off showing um, before the Walker apocalypse happened. The zombies and that. A staff at this museum was... Working one night, and um, the boss apparently treats my garbage and stuff. And they're outside having cigarettes and stuff, breaking. And they said, Look, we gotta basically get rid of our boss. Stuff would be a lot better than we see him. The work of the bomb would be a lot nicer. Suddenly, alarms go off, sirens are going off, police cars are flying by, shit's hitting the fan. So they barricade themselves at in the museum. Not knowing what's happening outside of the streets of Paris, right? Because they're panicking, right? Then the woman that the show and her man shows up trying to get in. And um before she lets him before she can get him in, in a back entrance of the museum, a walker attacks him, eats him for lunch, marches down right Mike just tears him open, marches down on him right in front of her. Then it shows her face, then it goes back to now, and it's Madame Janet, the rebel. Leader of the soldiers. So, she was a janitor at this museum. And within a 13 year time gap of the Walker Apopolix. She turned from a janitor to, to a badass soldier lady. Hopefully they fill in the time gaps of what caused her to become a soldier. Like, maybe she wasn't a soldier to begin with. Maybe she, she just took over, you know. And just liked being a military person. And it also shows other... Throughout the episodes, you see other people in this estate with her, right? And her second-in-command is also a staff member that worked at the museum. And also her third-in-command is also a staff member that worked at the museum. And so I'm like, I wonder if the whole staff working for her, right? Because three of them, so, two of them so far are. Maybe Garnett was before he turned good. Um, She's talking... She's thanking the, the people, the 19 guests in the house, the estate. And she said, have this fine meal we prepared for you, me and my soldiers. And in return, we just want the information where the refugees are being held at. The location. Because she said, this, they're holding us back from us making Paris what it should be. And all of that stuff, what her game plan is. Carol starts asking around, right? Like, hey, have you seen my friend? He's an American. Um, he may have, Perry has been here, or he might still be around, but nobody's answering her. Nobody's talking to her, right? And then she notices, like, the other members are not soldiers, like, the other staff of this estate, I'll call them, like, just keep to themselves, right? Then, one night, I have a dinner, and this guy complains about how the food tastes like shit. And this other guy agrees and throws his food on the floor. While Madame Jeanette snaps her fingers like that, and looks at the guy, and he actually gets down all fours and started licking the food off the floor. I'm like, she must be powerful, right? <laughs> just snap her fingers like that and have him do that. And just by staring at him. Carol's like, I like how you treat guys around here. Like, you don't take the bullshit. And she's like, I, I appreciate that, she said. Um, she says, well, I, I've never seen you around Paris before. Usually I'm good at remembering faces. She said, oh, I was stuck for 13 years as a tourist outside of Paris. I've always wanted to come become here um as a tourist stuff like that and she's saying i'm here looking for someone and she says, oh who are you looking for and carol not knowing that daryl is basically pissing her off and taking out her soldiers left and right helping the refugees she says, i'm looking for somebody i considered a friend but he did something back home where we were staying at and i've been searching for him ever since she said wow you really must hate him Travel around the world looking for him. How do you know he's here? She said, I got wind that he showed up here from this truck stop. You know, way back there past Greenland. He's like, oh, yes, yes, yes. She said, they used to gather walkers for us to experiment on. And she said, no worry about that. That has nothing to concern you. She said, how would you like to work in the kitchen with my staff, prepare meals and stuff? And Carol says, you know what? I appreciate that. And she says, hopefully... She said, we'll find this man you're looking for. Because she said, I, one thing I do not like is how men treat women badly and stuff like that. So it looks like they're forming a mutual bond, right? Well, Carol's just lying to find out where Daryl is. 
Carol then starts asking around, like, the, with the other staff of the estate, like, hey, have you guys seen a man named Daryl Dixon and Daryl Dixon and stuff? And they start looking at him, right? Looking at her, I mean. Then she goes to feed the prisoners, and grenades are tied up to a chain to a wall. He's in very bad shape. Now he's missing two fingers, poor guy. And he's like coughing, and she feeds him because he basically can't feed himself. And um, he says, "You're looking for Daryl Dixon?" She says, "Yes. Do you know him? He's a friend of mine." I came here trying to find him to bring him back home. He says, he caused trouble for my boss, he said, and um, I turned good. He said, I know where he's at. And she says, really, do you? And he says, why do you want him? Like, to find him. She lies again. She says, he's my brother. Then think about it. She may not be lying because maybe they do have like a brother-sister relationship throughout the years, right? Because they really work very well together as a team. So he tells her about the estate, the refugee place. He said, surrounded by water. That's all I'm telling you. Then she goes and tells Raymay, who's still looking for her husband, Julian, that was taken away from the other army vehicle last episode, about this estate, surrounded by water. He knows right off the get-go where it's at. And she says, well, how about you and me leave? We'll try and find your husband. We'll get Daryl, and we'll get out here. She says, I'm not leaving without my husband. Then they see these people being escorted into in through a tunnel. They follow them. They take them to the scientist, the doctor, and he gets these soldiers to kill these people. And then he ejects them with something, and they come back as walkers, but they're really super fast. But then they're easy to kill. He says, "Oh, an other failed experiment." Carol Ramy now is seeing what's happening to these other people that the. Uh, Madam Jeanette chooses not to work at the estate as, like, basically maids and stuff or clean stables out for her, you know, her estate, the soldiers and that. To basically test subjects for the scientist. So, Reme betrays Carol because he thinks that maybe that's what's going to happen to her, his husband, Julian. He goes to Jeanette. He tells her about the location of where the refugees are at. He says Carol is actually a friend of Daryl's looking for him. Well, she's pissed off, goes after Carol. Carol escapes, gets on a horse, almost escapes the compound, but she's surrounded by soldiers and taken prisoner again. Then it shows them driving, and they come across the outskirts of the castle. It's off the distance. And she surrounds all these people up. And, Kuhn, and uh, I know it's Remain and Julian are gone now. And Carol says, what did you do to them? She says, don't worry. He... Helped me find out the location where the refugees are at that's giving me trouble. In return, I let him and his husband go to live freely in Paris. I bet you the, the zombies, the walkers, I guarantee you, the way she was talking. And she says, you want help, you want payback, but you lied to me about who Daryl is. She said, he's in there. And he, she says, go, you can go see him. But you'll be helping me as well. And then all of a sudden, this army jeep pulls up. And there's a rumble in the noise. And she lines all she lines like all the people up. I uh, and all some of her soldiers and says, You have been chosen. Then the scientist comes out of the Jeep and apparently he's gonna eject them with this serum that's gonna make them become walkers that were super fast and they're gonna attack the castle. And that's what happens at the end of Carol's journey. Daryl's turn. Him Isabella and the old man, we finally learn his name is Falu. About time we know who this badass old guy is, his name. This, uh, they're able to get back into the castle because low tide has happened now. They're able to cross the water safely. Then it shows that one of them, that last episode, um, accidentally found the rat prisoner, how prisoner in a wine cellar. She's now a prisoner. And the leader of the refugees tells her, like, you should not have found him. She says, what did you do to Dixon, Isabella, and Falu, the old man, and my boyfriend? He said, look, I don't know why they're not back. They're supposed just to kill Daryl, Isabella, the old man, be done with it. I guess complications occurred. He said, but don't worry, the prophecy is happening the next day. She said, prophecy? She said, what is so special about the kid and all? And he said, you know of his story. That he was when he was born, his mother... I died, gave him childbirth, and she became a walker. 
And he says there's a prophecy of a kid that would be born, that would be immune to the walkers. He said, it's a prophecy. His blood could save us all. He said, how many years have we been hiding in this castle away from the walkers? Away from bad people, he said. When, when in reality, now that the lot's here of his blood, we can basically walk them on the walkers. They won't attack us, right? We'll smell like one of them. Stuff like that. She says, you're nuts. That will not work. And he says, you're a Cersei. Then she gets past him and tries to escape. Running through the hallways in the castle. Screaming for help. And basically, they kill her. They throw her over a castle wall and she dies. The next day, the refugee leader and his second in command welcome everybody to the grounds of the castle. He said, today is a special day. The lots take brought out. And he don't know what the hell is going on, right? He just knows he's special for some reason. Then finally he tells him about the prophecy and all that. And the lot's like, okay, okay. Then he says, what do I got to to prove that I may be this special immune to the walkers? He said, it's simple. We're going to have a walker bite you. And if you don't turn, now we know that your blood is immune to the walker virus. We will take the blood away from you. Inject it into each one of us, so we become immune as well. The Rod said, Basia, I'm going to be killed here, right? And he says, it's for a greater cause. And he said, and just to make things bittersweet, he said, the walker that's going to bite you is the lady that tried to escape to save you. Now, warn him. So, she comes this close to biting the Rod, and then suddenly, Daryl, Isabel, the old guys show up, make the save. Daryl disposes of the walker. Then he says, it's showtime. And I can't say the rest of the stuff he says because I can't curse on this video. Um, Isabel and the old guy getting the rot away from the refugee leader and his troops. Everybody in the castle now, some of them are turned bad. Some of them are still good. Like, some of them, like, I noticed, like, shelter Daryl to get him to go get, you know, get away. While well, I want to shove through them to try to get to him. So, Daryl and all of them are trying to escape the castle. They get separated, of course. Daryl has this amazing fight scene, folks. When he takes out, like, a dozen of the refugee soldiers, like, left, right, and center. He meets up with Isabella, Fodo, the old guy, and Nara. And they're this close to escaping the castle grounds. When, um, they're surrounded by guards and the refugee leader. And so, Daryl fights them to cause a distraction for them. The other ones to get away. Isabel gets separated from them. So, Daryl and Isabel are captive. Um, the chain to this wall, a kind of like a bathroom shower stall fame in the castle grounds, the chain to the walls, and they're beaten up. Like, Daryl's a rough shape. Isabel is a rough shape. And the refugee leader said, This is your own fault. He said, You could have just let the prophecy happen. And Daryl says, you're going to kill the kid. And he says, why did that walker bit him and he never turned? He said, oh, well, then he wasn't the chosen one. We'll find the chosen one. He says, Daryl says, screw you. And then uh, the guy smashes Daryl the butt of his wife hole. The other guy beats up on Isabella some more. And then finally Isabella says, enough, enough. So he says, take me away. I'll tell you what the old guy is taking the, my nephew. So... He takes her away. Daryl's screaming for her to come back. And Daryl's still locked in the cell, right? Daryl is, like, kicking at the cell door, trying to pull the chain off the wall. I am curious if he's doing that to save Isabella. Um, they also confessed in this episode that they both still like each other, love each other. And she still wants to leave to go back to Alexander the Commonwealth with Laurent and that. And um, Daryl, like... What I'm getting at is, I don't know if he's trying to get out of that prison cell to save them, or is he having a flashback to when he was a prisoner of Negan, when Negan the Saviors kept Daryl and locked in that room for months and weeks uh, without feeding him or feeding him cans of dog food, stuff like that. Maybe he's having flashbacks to that time he didn't like, and he just wants out of that prison cell because he doesn't want to be reminded of that happening to him. Um... What's going to happen now? Is Isabel going to betray the location of her nephew to the refugee leader just to leave Daryl alone and her? I don't think so. She's got something else planned. And they don't know that the soldiers have showed up outside the castle walls ready to attack them with these new breed of walkers. Is Carol going... How the hell is Carol going to get away from this? Like, all I can think of 
is that they're going to start shooting the people and she's going to duck and take off or pretend she's shot. And then when they go to eject her with a serum, she gets away. Because somehow she's not going to be turn into a walker. We know that, right? So that would be a twist we'll never see coming, but I can't see that happening. Wow, this episode was actually packed, folks. I love the fight scenes. Uh, I like this old guy. I hope he makes it. I hope he actually goes with Daryl. He actually walks through the gates of Alexandria, the Commonwealth, with Daryl. Because even like during this episode, the old guy's like, I want to meet these people at the Ezekiel. He says, Maggie, um, Negan, stuff like that. And Daryl says, you are fit nicely with us, right? And the old guy says, yes. And I also liked it when, um, during the episode where, um, they got Renoir and they went to leave and Daryl starts fighting the soldiers. The old guy's like, kick their ass, Dixon, kick their ass. <laughs> I gotta laugh my ass off. This guy's hilarious. Anyways, folks, next week's episode is going to be super action-packed as well. They didn't show no previews of what's coming. The only thing I see is online is that the castle is attacked by Jeanette and her group. And amongst the chaos where Carol and Daryl finally meet each other, as always says. Stay safe, everybody. Too sweet. Bye.